Bioware just dropped the cinematic story trailer for Anthem, so let's dive in and take a look. Before we do anything, I must disclose that my travel and accommodations were provided and paid for by EA to attend EA Play. I was also given exclusive hands-on time with Anthem. Transparency is extremely important to me and I maintain complete editorial control over what I say and my opinions. If you have any more questions with regards to disclosure, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Hey guys, JV here, and today I'm sharing my Anthem story trailer analysis. Before we get into that, just a heads up, you can find daily streams of the newest games as well as commentaries just like this on my Facebook page. So check out the link in the description below and stay tuned for tons of awesome video game content. First, I'm going to play the trailer in its entirety in case you haven't watched it already. Here you go. The gods vanished and left our world in chaos, creating, altering, destroying. The Anthem is all that remains. There's a storm coming. These walls can't protect us forever. Since this is a story trailer, there's a lot of narration that clues us in on the story and narrative context, so let's talk about that first. A woman starts with, The gods vanished and left our world in chaos, creating, altering, and destroying. The anthem is all that remains. This represents the narrative backdrop for the game. That's what's happening in this universe. During the EA Play press conference, lead writer Kathleen Rootsert explained that the world is left unfinished by the gods, but they left behind their world-building tools. That's why there's constant conflict. The tool is literally called the Anthem of Creation. Nobody knows how to use it except for one faction that we're about to talk about. So, the gods left. The world is literally being reshaped by crazy storms and dangerous monsters. Let's move on to the next bit of dialogue. This man says, there's a storm coming, these walls can't protect us forever. We know that there is a central story hub in the game called Fort Tarsus. That's where this guy is. And of course, this is a Bioware game, so narrative is a focus. To ensure that it feels individual to each player, the story is maintained in Fort Tarsus. As far as the coming storm, it's anyone's guess what that could mean specifically. Maybe it's generally speaking all the storms caused by the gods leaving and the Anthem of Creation and all of that. As for the walls, those are the ones surrounding Fort Tarsus. I'm not sure you can see it in the trailer, but there are certainly big walls. The last bit of narration says something is out there. It wants to destroy us all. Again, this is very vague, but it gives me some serious Mass Effect vibes with the Reapers, for example. There's a big bad force out there that is delivering imminent doom. We know the bad faction in the game is called the Dominion that was announced on stage. They're an ancient evil rival and they have discovered a way to weaponize the Anthem of Creation, which again was left behind by the gods. So us the players as freelancers, it's our duty to stop them and protect the people of Fort Tarsus. 
Okay, now let's go back through and look at this trailer visually. First off, it's incredibly gorgeous and all in engine. It's really incredible what they're able to do with Frostbite. So this first scene, we see what looks to be an innocent person walking through a tribal looking area infested with sand people. I mean, they really do look like Star Wars sand people, but we actually fight through this same area in the new gameplay demo footage. So we know these small guys are called scrappers and the bigger ones with the shields are called hunters. We don't know if they're part of the Dominion or just a savage, dangerous faction that we'll come across out in the world. Next, we see Fort Tarsus and this guy, once again, he's the one narrating about the storm. He's also a story character. We know this because he appears in the gameplay demo at the very beginning. When we start in the Strider, he briefs us on the mission. You know, you got to stop the people creating acid and using it against other you know, people. So we know that this guy is friendly. He doesn't look like a freelancer, but perhaps he's a quest giver. Maybe he was a former freelancer and he's retired now. He's just helping out how he can. We don't know. We'll have to see. Also, we have the spliced storm gameplay in there too. Crazy electrical weather that actually attacks our suit. So Kathleen actually mentioned that the world is so dangerous that without the suit, you could die easily. That's the narrative reasoning behind the suits. And obviously they're like war machines. So that helps too. I'd love to see some actual gameplay of these dangerous zones, you know, going through and getting attacked by these storms. We also have some shots of a mechanic working on the Ranger Javelin. We know there will be a lot of customization and progression with these suits, so that's kind of a way of visualizing it. Next up, we have some flight scenes through the clouds. It makes me wonder if we can actually reach up and fly that high into the air. We know the game has a ton of verticality just from the gameplay demo, so I'd love to see flying through clouds become a reality. Next, we're in this cave, which was in one of the teasers. We also see several of the other javelins, but we'll get to those specifically in a second. We settle on what appears to be a large idol built out of like metal, like scrap metal, which appears to be visually similar to the scrappers and hunters region area we saw earlier. So I guess you could assume that they built this. If they didn't, it's some other you know faction, some other force, we're not sure. Next, we see a little underwater bit. You can actually fly and pilot underwater. We see some of this in the gameplay demo. For now, this is more of an exploratory mechanic to discover new areas and kind of cool stuff. It's unconfirmed whether there will be underwater combat. We're just not sure, but you certainly will be able to fly at full speed into water and then maintain that speed kind of, well, you'll slow down and then come out of the water at full speed again. Next, we have a ton of combat sequences with Muse playing in the background, which is very awesome. The Ranger pops out and does an air melee, which you can totally do in the game, and then proceeds to use his regular shock melee. So from my hands on time with the gameplay demo, here's how melee works. On the Ranger, you can melee every two wish seconds. There's a cooldown and that actually varies between the suits. So the Ranger's melee is not super powerful. It's a direct damage melee, but it looks very cool, obviously. And then you have the Colossus melee. That's a ground pound that does AOE damage. I'm not sure if there's any gameplay of that, but I know from my hands Hands on time that that's definitely a thing and it has a little longer of a cooldown as far as I know. Next we have the Interceptor Javelin. This is a suit that we have not seen first person gameplay for because I you know it's not ready yet. I, apparently we're going to see more according to Mark Dara. They're going to show off more of the Interceptor later but we have no idea what the abilities are or how it differentiates between the Ranger, Colossus, and Storm. However, we do see this Frost Grenade ability, which is actually an ability that the Ranger currently has that I played around with in the gameplay demo. I'm not sure if that'll make it into the game or if this was just a cool placeholder to look awesome in the trailer. The Frost Grenade represents one of the elemental abilities in the game that can force a combo. So if you play the Mass Effect games, this is like a primer. That's what the Frost Grenade is. Some things prime and then other things detonate and force a combo for bonus damage. We also see this in the gameplay demo. Next is the Colossus using the shoulder mounted mortar. This is one of its cooldown abilities. Every five or so seconds, you can use this bad boy to deliver massive damage and detonate combos. Then we see the Storm Javelin suit flying up, looking awesome, and delivering a fiery ball of space magic. This appears to be one of the Storm's cooldown abilities that you can use every few seconds. Personally, I'm going to main a Storm. I really love the look of this Javelin. Next, we see the Colossus raising its shield. 
So this is one of the Javelin's abilities. Each Javelin has a unique damage mitigation ability that only it can do. For example, the Ranger can dash. It's kind of quick. The Colossus can throw up its shield, but it can't dash at all. And then the Storm, I believe its B ability is to levitate. I'm not exactly sure on that. And then we don't know anything about the Interceptor's ability because, again, we haven't seen it yet. Next, we see the down ranger, very dramatic, with this giant monster's foot about to crush her, but more importantly, we see the interceptor fly past really quickly to save her life. We also see some little bug-like wings on its back. Perhaps that gives us a clue into the theme of the interceptor. Maybe it's quick like a bug, you know, maybe like a bee or something, I don't know, but it, you know, the way it looks structurally, it's very light. It looks like it's quick, so maybe it's quicker than all of the other javelin suits. Finally, the trailer ends with this hulking creature that appears to be some kind of elemental being, like some kind of earth golem or titan or something along those lines. We also see him in the gameplay demo. But the size and scale of this enemy, which is most important to me, is not exaggerated. It's actually this big. It's insane. So it'll be interesting to see how tough it is to actually take down. Overall, I think this trailer, the cinematic story little look, sets a fantastic stage for everything in the game, from combat to exploration to story. I really cannot wait to see more. And you guys can expect so much more Anthem coverage from me here on YouTube, over on Facebook as well. Be sure to follow me in both locations because I've got so much more to dive into and share. I am one of very few people that has had hands-on time in the entire world so far at this point. So I'm really excited to share all that I can share with you guys. All right, that's it for this video. In the comment section below, tell me what you think about this trailer. Does this make you excited for the game? Are you a little more interested? Or does this turn you off of the game? This is not the kind of game you were looking for. Or are you worried about anything in particular? I know a lot of Bioware fans are worried that this is not a you know Bioware game. So let me know how you're feeling about Anthem in general in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more Anthem coverage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.